So this week we're going to be talking about how to make graphs in Google Sheets. Graphs are very important whenever it comes to kind of analyzing and looking at data uh, because it provides that visual representation. We could look at all these numbers all the time and really try to get down into the nitty gritty and look and see how these numbers are interacting. But yet if we saw it in a graph, it would make so much more sense. So for example, we know that between 2018 and 2019, pounds per acre harvested on cotton actually decreased. We can see that on those numbers versus the numbers then increased from 2019 to 2020. And we get into a lot of these predictive numbers out here. We see them go down and up and down and up. Um, but we don't really, if we had a graph, it would show that a lot easier and we'd make a lot better sense of it. So we're gonna be dealing with data uh, for this particular example that's based off of cotton. And then in your assignment this week, it's going to be dealing with different other other types of crops, namely the cattle industry, the beef industry. We're going to be bringing in a lot of data from there. And if you look at our years, um, we start off with 2018 and go down to 2025. Currently, we're in the year 2020. So where am I getting all these predictive numbers from? Where am I getting all this information from? Well, actually, I'm getting all this from the Food and Agricultural Policy Research Institute out of the University of Missouri, or also known as FAPRI. So FAPRI, every single year, they put out this FAPRI baseline outlook. And this baseline outlook, uh, it, they produce this large report upon it, and they provide you with the, uh, the spreadsheet with all the data. And what they do at FAPRI is they put all of this data, all this farm data, through a their economic models and try to actually predict years out into the future. So Fapri will actually try to predict about 10 years out into the future. And I just took a snapshot of a couple of the current years and then trying to predict out to 2025. And granted, these are predictions. And we don't know exactly what's going to happen, but that actually provides a good baseline to allow people to kind of get a feel for what does what is the agricultural industry expected to do over the next five to ten years. Granted, these are all predictions and we don't know exactly what's going to happen. But I went ahead and pulled off their data, uh, pulled off their numbers off of that FAPRI baseline. And I'm going to go ahead and use cotton as an example because cotton is a really cool uh, commodity. First off, it is the most important fiber, natural fiber in the United States agricultural sector. It accounts for 80% of the natural fiber production here in the United States. And it, since we're located here in Wyoming, we don't produce much cotton. So I thought it'd be kind of interesting, kind of fun to go through these cotton numbers as well. So we're going to go ahead and get started with what you need to do this week. And as we're going, I'm going to talk a little bit about these numbers of the cotton industry and give you a little bit of background on that as well. So first and foremost, you're going to have a link on Moodle uh, that says FAPRI data for the beef industry or something along that name. It says um, data from Fra Fa FAPRI is what it's going to say. And what you'll need to do is you'll need to open up that spreadsheet and it's going to give you a view only spreadsheet. Now view only you can't really do much with. So what I need you to do is copy and paste that data. So you're going to highlight all of this data. Make sure that everything that I'm asking for you're going to go ahead and highlight it. Now I'm going to go ahead and highlight these notes down here that I made for myself. So I've got everything highlighted and I'm going to right click with my mouse and I'm going to come up here to copy. Another thing that we can do is use a hotkey. So a hotkey is one that we can press a couple of buttons on our keyboard and it's going to do the exact same thing, only it's going to do it faster. So the hotkey for copy is control C. So I can press copy or I could have pressed control C on my clipboard or on my keyboard. So I'm going to come over here into a, a brand new spreadsheet. So you're going to need to create a brand new spreadsheet and you're going to right click and you're going to click paste. Now we need to give this spreadsheet a name right away. So I'm going to go ahead and name this spreadsheet charts of the charts of the cotton industry. And then I'm going to start diving into making a few different graphs. So the very first graph that I'm going to make is I'm going to make a line chart comparing yield to year. So I want to see, uh, looking at what is the expected, what are the current and then the expected 
pounds per harvested acre. So how much is per acre are we producing in cotton in terms of pounds? I want to see how that's comparing to years in the future and the current level. So I'm going to compare the amount of pounds per acre to the number of years. And I'm going to do this in a line chart. A lot of times, whenever you get into data that's dealing with uh, timelines and uh, data that's expanding over multiple years, 10, 20, 30 years, or even a, just a few years, we're often going to use a line chart. So let's go ahead and create that. So I'm going to highlight this data right here. I'm going to go ahead and start and highlight the title as well. And I'm going to highlight just these pounds per harvested acre. I'm going to say insert, and I'm going to come right here to chart. So it throws in this chart right here that's that's showing us what we think it's going or what they're predicting it to be. And as you can see that after we get past this point in time, it starts just sloping up. Well, that makes sense because a lot of this is going to be predictive data. So whenever I created that chart, we had what was known as this chart editor just pop up over here right away. So let's go through that chart editor real quick. We have two different or two different main categories. We have setup and then customize. We're going to focus on setup for right now. You should focus on the setup first to get all that done. So we have line chart, and then it says data range. And then we have our x-axis right here. So we need to actually add our x-axis down here. We need to have information down here. Well, what are we comparing this pounds per harvested acre to? Well, we're comparing it to the years. So we need to add our x-axis and add our years. So I'm going to click right there where it says add x-axis. And I'm going to come right here to these four little squares that says select a data range. So I click on that and I'm going to highlight the title and then all of the years as well. And I say, OK. So now it kind of cleans up our chart, our chart a little bit. So we start off with 2018. We see that it goes to 2019, 2022. So it's skipping year. It's automatically doing that for us. But now we have this line chart that is comparing pounds per harvested acre to these years down here. So now that we have our line chart and everything looks right, but we're not done with it yet. We need to make these charts look professional. We need to clean them up a little bit. So how do we clean up these charts? How do we make them look more professional? That's where we get into this customize aspect. So first and foremost, we're gonna click on, you could go through and adjust some of these chart styles. So I'll talk about these real quick. You can change the background color, uh, maybe one of the background color yellow. I really don't like that. So I'm going to say uh, a white background. Uh, we could smooth out these lines. If I click smooth, you see how it kind of smooths them out. Uh, if I unsmooth them, it just gives us our hard data points. I could say maximize to where it's going to get rid of those margins. And then plot null values. So whenever we're dealing with these, we're not going to have any null values. But what if we what if we deleted this value right here? What if we had that missing? Now we see a big chunk of our data is missing right here. So I'm going to double click and it's going to bring up that chart editor. But if, if that ever happened where you had that uh, uh, what's known as a null value, you can actually plot null values and it's going to just average that out for you. But since we actually have our data, we don't need to worry about that plotting null values. So as you see, after I get off, if I type in here, my chart editor disappears. If that happens, we can actually just double click directly on this chart, someplace on this chart, and it typically brings up that part of the chart editor. So let's keep going through this. And then we can compare modes. Uh, we don't really have much to compare right now. So that's going to be, these are all kind of uh, interesting stuff, but we're not going to use it very much. Where we're going to be working heavily in is, is this chart and axis title. So we're going to first change our chart title. Maybe we're not going to call it pounds per harvested acre, but we're going to put maybe something along the lines. We're going to change this number to say uh, cotton yield and then maybe say something along the line or we're just going to say cotton yield per acre. So now we can change our tar chart title by going right here and having this say chart title. Now, maybe we want to say um, we want to change what our horizontal axis. So our horizontal axis is this one down here. We don't have a title. Well, we need to add a title. So we're going to call this years because we're simply working with years in this particular aspect. And then maybe we want to change our, uh, our 
vertical axis as well. So right now it's in pounds per harvested acre. So maybe I just want to say pounds forward slash or meaning per harvested acre just to clean that up, just to shorten that up a little bit. So we have that all that aspect and now we can change our chart titles. We could actually add a chart a subtitle sub chart subtitle as well and say maybe for the United States to where we could add this subtitle uh, to add a little more clarification. So that, that's pretty much going to encompass our, our titles and we could change our title format and go through a lot of that. I'm not going to dive into that as much. You can play with that on your own. Um, next we're going to get into the series. So we only have one series so that's that's kind of just going to stay the same for right now. We got we can add a legend in there, but then I want to bring your attention to these vertical and horizontal axis. So the vertical and horizontal axis means that or allows us to do some other things. So we see that most of these value are all this data actually falls between 750 and 1,000 or, or yeah 1,000 pounds per harvested acre. So we've got all this blank space in our in our in our graph. We don't necessarily need all that blank space. So maybe we're going to set a minimum value of 750 pounds and a maximum value of 1,000 pounds. What does that do? Well, that starts our, where usually it's at a zero down here on our vertical axis. It now starts at 750 and it allows us to see these changes, these more dramatic changes, clearer and more concise and to the point. So that actually brings up and enlarges our graph. So that's that will allow us to actually analyze this data easier. So let me ask you something. Which one is easier? Looking at just these data points or being able to see it graphed like this? So whenever we get done customizing our graph, whenever we get done adding our titles and adding these in, we're just going to move this graph out of the way. We don't want our graph covering up any of our data. We want it off over here to the side. So I'm going to just take it over here to the side. I'm going to put it right here at the top. You notice it's not covering up any of our data. And we're good on that aspect. All right, now we've got one graph that shows this line graph. But what if we need to compare multiple things? Like, say, for example, we want to compare what the farm prices are, the adjusted world price, and then this loan price within the cattle industry. We want to see how all three of them compare together. And we want to do that on one graph. So let's go ahead and dive into doing that. So there are a couple of ways to do this gra these graphs. You could highlight all of the data and then just say insert. And for the most part, it works. But sometimes it doesn't work. The, gra the computer tries to outsmart you and it tries to produce these graphs, making it easier for you. But it doesn't always work exactly the way that you want it to. I'm going to change this real quick because I realize that this is not dollars per hundredweight. This is cents per pound. So all of these prices are, are set up on a cents per pound aspect. So we're going to take it and show you kind of the longer way, the harder way on creating these graphs. And that's the way I would encourage you to create these graphs because it allows you to understand how to create these graphs easier and gives you more control. Also allows you to create more professional looking graphs. So we're going to go ahead and highlight just one of our data sets. We're going to highlight just one of our prices. In this particular case, we're going to highlight these farm prices that's showing that cents per pound. So I'm going to go ahead and insert this chart. And it automatically says, oh, look, we think you want a column chart. Well, we don't necessarily want a column chart. What we want is another line chart. So under this setup, we're going to go column and, and instead of saying column, we're going to select line. So now we've got our lines here, but we don't see much of anything else. We don't have any charts. We don't have any data, nor do we have the other lines compared to it. So I'm going to move this graph down here and we're going to keep working on this setup. First and foremost, I want to add the other series. I want to add this adjusted world price. And I want to add this loan rate. So I'm going to double click on this again. And I'm going to go to setup. Go to add series. And then I'm going to click on this little square right here. And I'm going to add the data for this adjusted world price. Now you can see that my, my data box is popped up right over the top of where I need it to be. 
but I'm going to highlight that data and I know that I need to highlight between H3 and H11 or all the way down to row 11 because over here I highlighted it's going to say that the first data range that I highlighted was G3 to G11 which is what I highlighted on these farm prices and as long as the rows match up I should be good so I know I got to go down to H11 so I'm going to click OK now that's not all of the series that I want to add I'm going to move my uh, video real quick and I'm going to add another series so I'm going to click right there and I'm going to add and I'm going to add this loan rate again I'm going to go just down to H or I11 now because I need to go to row I11 because that's what I did on the other two so I then I click OK and again it shows up this data range is just popping up up here so now and also on top of that because we're dealing with multiple lines and we're highlighting the titles associated with that line it's automatically creating a legend for us so we don't actually have to go in there and adjust that legend but if we want to adjust the name on the legend we would just say loan rate for cotton and it's going to automatically adjust it everything's linked in that sense so I need to bring up my chart editor and keep going so I'm going to double click again I need to now add my my horizontal axis my x-axis so how do I do that I'm gonna do that the same way I did it last time I'm gonna add click add x-axis click right here and I'm gonna highlight the years all the way down to h11 starting on f3 to h11 and click OK so now I've got my years down here I've got my prices I've got my um, I've got my uh, the price values over here what am I missing off this graph well I am missing my titles I'm missing my labels I'm missing my titles so I need to add those in so I'm gonna go into customize and I'm gonna to go to chart axis and titles first off I'm gonna add my title so I'm gonna say cotton prices the next thing that I'm gonna add I should uh, you know always add your chart titles first then I'm gonna add my horizontal axis title so what is our horizontal axis title pertaining to well that is pertaining to the years so I'm gonna just title that years then I need to add my vertical axis title so whenever I go to add my vertical axis title I'm dealing with the price now cotton prices but these are cents per pound so now we've got all of our chart our title here now just like on the last graph we don't necessarily need all this open space down here um, so for this particular graph well I tell you what for this particular graph I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it and, and leave this open space down here I'm not gonna adjust my axis right here to, to put the minimum at 40 or the max at 80 so I think we're good there so I'm done with this graph this graph looks good it says I got years I've got my prices I've got my legend up here what if I didn't want my well let's let's look at something else let's say I don't want my legend right there we can move our legend around so right now it says position of auto I could say I wanted my legend inside making the graph a little bit bigger we could say no legend well that doesn't do us very good because we don't know where it's what the lines are pertaining to anymore we could say bottom we could say right left uh, however you would like a position or you could just leave it right there at the top me personally I think this looks pretty clean and, and good so let's look at these these prices in and kind of what do they mean for the cotton industry especially some of these predictive prices so first off I'm gonna move my graph out of the way because I don't want it covering my data just like before and I'm gonna move this over to kind of get this graph a little bit more right in the center to where we could talk about it so we have our farm prices here and our farm prices basically mirror our world price but our world prices are a little bit lower so what does that mean well what that means is we're expecting that the US farm price to actually be higher than the world price going ahead so that's that's a good positive aspect for the cotton industry although for anybody who's a cotton farmer you know that these prices are relatively low and they're not looking very positive in terms of what you really wish that cotton price would be and then we also see that this loan rate for cotton down here is set at 52 now it's held constant all the way across at 52 cents per pound well what does this cotton price mean what does this loan rate for cotton mean 
Well, a lot of times in the row crop industry, there is what they're called these loan rates. And these loan rates are actually set up by the, the United States government, by, um, by our agricultural entities within the United States government. And what this loan rate says is that if prices for cotton fall below the loan rate, that then the agricultural loans will kick in. The United States government will, will uh, activate certain payments and actually pay these farmers for their cotton. So basically what that is, is that's a price floor. Basically saying that if the farm prices fall below this loan rate, then the United States government will kick in and actually provide subsidies to these cotton farmers in order to offset that price between the world price and that loan price. So ultimately what that does is it sets a price floor for our cotton farmers, meaning that they can't really get paid less than this, this loan rate set forward by the government. Is this a pretty important number? Well, yeah, because as long as farm prices stay above this loan rate for cotton, then the government doesn't have to pay out those loan rate prices, meaning that they get to save that money. They, and they Ultimately, the government doesn't want to pay those money, that money. They don't want to provide that subsidy because they don't want to have to pay that. But yet, it's set up there to protect our farmers in case the prices do get too low. So as long as this world price and this farm price stay above it, we're not paying out any of those loan rates. So... That's kind of, those are three important values to all kind of compare. And it's, they're all values that we're going to want to know kind of looking into the future. And we can all see that graphically. We can see that our farm prices never fall below our loan rates. And we can see that all by our graphs right here. So essentially that's how you're going to do a multiple line, um, multiple line, line chart. All right. So next I want to dive into a multiple line, line chart. Only this time we're going to be comparing two different types of things. So in this case, we're going to be comparing harvested acre. So these are the, this was the amount of harvested or, or actually this was not harvested acre. This was planted acres for cotton. So, and it's also a million acres. So if we see 13.85, that means 13,850,000 acres were planted for cotton. And we're also going to compare that back to the farm prices. So we know in economics that farm prices will affect, or prices will affect how much production is out there. So in this case, we're going to be looking at how does the farm prices affect planted acres. But we also know that these farm prices are in cents per pound, whereas this is million acres. Those are two different things. So we want to be able to compare them, but then also show that, actually show those values. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to go ahead and create another line chart. So I'm going to highlight this planted area. I'm just going to highlight just one of this series. I'm going to say insert chart. And it's going to throw off this planted area. And just like before, we're going to add a second series. We're going to move our graph out of the way to where we can see it all. We're going to say add series. We're going to click on this little square, the data range that we are going to click. So I'm going to actually click in this box and then select farm prices and say okay. So now we have farm prices way up here and planted acres way down here. And there's not enough there. There's not enough variation there. So it looks like farm prices just stay, or farm planted acres stays the same. When in reality, we're looking at swaths of, you know, close to a half a million to a million acres of difference here. So we want, this doesn't show us enough. But before we get into that, we need to go ahead and add our x-axis. We always need to add all of our axes and all of our series first when creating these graphs. So now we have years down here and planted acres over here. So it says planted acres over here, but we're also dealing with farm prices. So how are we going to change that? So let's actually go over here to this customize. And let's come down here to these series. And the first thing I want to do is I want my planted acre values to show up over here. And I want all of our farm prices to show up on the right side of this, of this graph. So in where it says apply to all series, I'm going to click farm prices. I'm going to scroll down and where it says left axis, I'm going to actually say right axis. To where now we can separate these out. Where we have planted acres over here and farm prices over here. So we're going to go ahead and do that first before we start titling our, our, 
our graph if we're going to split up our axis. So now, now that we've got that done, well, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to give it a chart title and I'm going to say uh, something along the lines of, oh, I want to say cotton acres planted and cotton prices. Let them know what we're looking at on this graph, right? So then I'm going to change my title and I'm going to add a horizontal axis. And my horizontal axis, just like is before, is years, right? So I'm going to type in years. Now I want to add the vertical axis title. And you notice there's now two vertical axis titles. There's a vertical axis and a right vertical axis. Vertical axis is default to the left. So we're going to click vertical axis title. And this is no longer going to be planted acres. This is, uh, well, we're going to keep planted acres. In the millions. Showing that, or letting them know that whenever it says 15, that means 15 million acres. Then I'm going to go ahead and add my right vertical axis title. So I just clicked right there to say right vertical axis title. And this is going to be our farm prices. And then I'm going to actually change up the way this looks a little bit. I'm going to say farm prices and I'm going to put cents per pound. And put it in parentheses. And we're going to change our vertical axis. And we're going to put in the millions in parentheses. That's going to, we see a lot of graphs that are actually set up like this, where it tells you, especially if they're split up, it's going to tell you what are we looking at, and we're going to say in the millions, and then far prices, and then we're going to tell you how it's measured. Now, we're not seeing much variation in these farm prices, and we're not seeing much variation in these planted acres. So what if we wanted to enlarge or really get down and see exactly how much this planted acres have been shifting? So we're going to get it down here to this vertical axis. And I am going to say that my vertical axis, now remember vertical axis defaults to the left vertical axis. So this is going to be dealing with our planted acres. And we see that planted acres never really falls below 12.5. I'm going to set a minimum of 10. And I'm going to set a maximum of 15. So now we can see a little bit more of a variation. Uh, you know, maybe that's not quite an, uh, a large enough minimum. Let's set it at 12. And 12 and 15 to where it shows a lot more of that variation. But that's pertaining to just, as I was typing in those numbers, it was changing just these planted acres over here. So I want to adjust my right vertical axis. So I click right vertical axis. And remember, that's changing these over here. I want to set my minimum to, let's say... Uh, 60 cents and I want to set my maximum at 80 well maybe I don't want to set it at 80 I want to go 75 so now we can see uh, even that's still a little too much um, but we can we'll, we'll minimize this to 55 it makes it look I'm gonna try and make it look a little cleaner so we see that now that we've got this graph before it looked like the planted acres just kind of held constant small dip but it pretty much held constant well, now we can see that it actually is going to decrease, kind of hit a, a little bit of an uptick, and then go ahead and fall off again. Well, let's compare that back to prices. What are our, what are our prices kind of doing? Overall, our prices are dropping. And then between 2020 and 2021, we're expecting a, a, a jump, which, you know, an increase in prices this year will encourage farmers to plant more. So we see an increase the, the next year. What we see a lot of times in the agricultural industry is that the prices from the previous year impacts the supply or the planted areas for the next year. So we see that whenever prices increase the year before, a lot of times planted acres go up the following year. But whenever prices decrease the year before, we'll see that supplies decrease. So we see a decrease in price here, supplies decrease the next year. Or planted acres decrease, I mean. We see that prices decrease here, we see planted acres decrease. Prices increase. Planted acres increase. Well, then prices decrease. Well, planted acres fall off. 
And then we see that they're predicting that planted acres to continuously fall off. Meanwhile, prices are going up. Now that's predict we get out here and that gets into a lot of that predictive area. So we don't really know exactly what it is, but that's kind of what they're predicting. So this is going to be showing, it's actually showing a, a time lag by a year by whenever prices fall, we see a decrease in production. And whenever prices fall the year before, decrease in production. Prices rise the year before, production increases. So we actually now can create a graph that shows two different, completely different data sets. One is going to be graphed over here on the left and one is graphed over here on the right. So now that we've got this graph and, we, and we've talked about that, now we can move on to our next graph. So we're going to move off of line graphs for our next graph and we're going to move into a pie chart. So in this pie chart, a lot of times what the pie chart is, is we're comparing a whole lot of area or a whole lot of different things and put it on percentages to, to show comparison of percents. So we're going to dive into that now. So down here, we've got a table set up for acres planted of various crops. So it's looking at how many acres were planted for corn, soybeans, wheat, upland cotton, sorghum, barley. Um, so we want to, in this particular instance, we basically want to compare cotton, because we're dealing with the cotton industry on this, on all these graphs, to all of these other commodities, like especially like hay harvested and sugar beets and, and you know, corn. So how are we going to do this? And we want to compare that for the 2019 uh, data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of my 2019 data. Again, I'm going to come up to insert, chart, and it gives us this column chart. We don't necessarily need this column chart because what this column chart is trying to do is it's trying to show a timeline. We don't need that. We want a pie chart. So we're going to click on this column or this chart type just like we have in the past, and we're going to set up a pie chart. Just a simple plain Jane pie chart. So we actually have something very funky come up. This right here, this uh, this big blue spot that says it's 82, 87.2%, it's not accurate. And the reason why, and I, I neglected to realize this whenever I was doing this, I highlighted the year 2019. Whenever you're creating this pie chart, you should highlight just this data. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this chart and start over just to show you the right way uh, now that we realize we don't need to put in this 19. So I'm going to go into, now I'm going to say insert. Now that I've got everything but that year highlighted, I'm going to say chart. Again, we're going to change this to a pie chart. And now we look a lot more normal. We, we see that a lot of it still is in some major of these major commodities, big chunks. Uh, and then we've got all these smaller chunks over here. But we don't know what these correspond with. Now this pie chart showing off percentages, but we don't know what they correspond with. So we actually need to add our labels. In order to do this, we click Add Label. We're going to click Select Data Range. We're going to highlight everything from all of our labels. So these labels are going to correspond directly with the rows over here. So we see that we're dealing with rows uh, 28 through 41, whereas our values are 28 through 31 as well. And we click OK. So now that we have all of our data on here and all of our labels, now we can go in and see what are the major commodities that were planted in uh, terms of millions of acres back in 2019. So we have corn, soybeans next, followed by wheat, and we see that cotton over cotton, upland cotton was at 4.5% of the total amount harvested. Hay makes up one of the larger swaths of 17.6, but now we can see all of this. So that's all great, but now we're not done with this chart yet. We need to go ahead and customize it. We need to add a chart title to it. Um, so we're going to add a chart title. Now you notice, you know, before we had chart title and the subtitle and then vertical axis and horizontal horizontal axis, we don't have that anymore. Now we just have chart title and subtitle. Why? Well, there's no vertical or horizontal axis. So we're going to add chart title and we're going to call it 2019, um, 2019 commodity production by acres. 
So now we can look at all that and see all of that information. And we can also go through some of these other aspects, such as chart title. Uh, we can make it 3D, we can try to maximize it. Um, and we could change some of these other layouts, just like before. We've got this pie chart. We have a, you could put a donut hole in there. You could say 75%. Uh, just changing the way that it looks. I'm going to say just kind of keep it at zero. Slice label. We could actually throw slice labels in there. We could say the values in there in some of these bigger ones. It'll throw off values to show actually the million acres. We could say value and percentage. So we could change some of these different things to kind of put it in there as well. We're just going to say none. And then you could also go through some of these other ones and play with some of these other ones. You could add this legend in there, um, but essentially that's how you're going to make a pie chart. And these pie charts are very good because it shows us kind of a lot of these comparison aspects. Um, how does corn compare to soybeans and so on and so forth. So we're going to move this over here and we're going to move it out of our way. I'm going to put it right up here at the top. We're going to put it right next to that cotton yield per acre. So next, I want to add a column chart. Um, so I want to compare a couple things. On this very next graph, I want to compare domestic use to exports. I want to see stacked side by side, whereas down here, you know, we compared line charts. I want to see them stacked side by side, and I want to actually use a column chart. So we're going to come up here to this production and use, and I'm going to compare this domestic mill use to exports per year. Just like always, I'm going to highlight a, one of our series. I'm going to say insert, chart, and it's already going to predict a column chart, which that's exactly what we want in this particular instance. So this is our domestic mill use for the United States. But we don't know what any of this means, so we're going to have to add our titles. But before we do that, we want to compare it to something. So we're going to add this series. And the series that we're going to add is these exports. So I'm going to highlight down to row 23. Again, I know it goes to row 23 because we know that our, our data range so far is H15 to H23. So we need to highlight those same rows to compare it to. So I press OK. So then it, now it shows how much goes in for domestic yield, mill use as compared to exports. And they put them in these line or in these columns. So Let's go ahead and add our titles in there because right now this chart doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot. We don't know what it's pertaining to. We know it's got domestic mill use versus exports, but we don't know it's for cotton or for wool or what. So we need to add our titles. So we're going to come in here to customize. Again, we're going to add our titles. So we're going to call it cotton use. We're going to add our vertical axis. Our vertical axis is going to be in million bales because we're dealing with million bales here our horizontal axis our horizontal axis just like before we're dealing with years now we missed something down here we didn't add our years in there so I'm gonna add my title and then I'm gonna go back and actually add my uh, the go back to setup and add our x-axis and ladies and gentlemen, I, I told you there's an easy way to do it, and you can just highlight all the data, and then the the graphs try to outguess themselves. And, but this is why I would strongly encourage you to go through the longer way of actually highlighting and adding all these individual series in there, because it makes it makes you more well-rounded, like I said before. And then if you miss something, you can always go back and you know how to add it in without having to redo it all. So now we have our completed our chart. We know which years we produced, how many, or what, what the measurement was. It was a million bales. We have domestic use versus exports. What is this chart telling us about the cotton industry? Well, the cotton industry, we export more than we use here in the United States. We export a hell heck of a lot. And if I added, would have added imports into there, our imports are minimal, minimal, very little. So we export a whole heck of a lot and we only use a little bit. So what does that mean for the cotton industry? It means that exports are a major deal. Trade is a major deal for the cotton industry. And we only produce a small amount here in the United States. And looking ahead, we're even into the predictive aspect, we're not seeing that we're expecting that to change very much. 
We're, we're expecting that to kind of hold true all the way through the year 2025. Now the last graph that I want to put in is what's known as a stacked uh, a stacked column. And I want to bring it in for stacked column for cotton use. So I want to bring in a, a column or an aspect that's going to look at how much did we have in beginning stocks, production, and then what was our ending stocks. Or better yet, uh, I don't want to let's back up let's actually compare domestic mill use to exports to ending stocks so let's compare these three in a stacked column so again I'm gonna highlight my data I'm gonna say insert we'll say insert chart it throws up a column now we don't want to use a column chart we want to use what is known as a stacked column so we're gonna enter a stacked column here and then, of course, we need to add our other series. We need to add our exports. So we're going to add our series. We're going to move that out of our way. We can move that out of our way to highlight what we need to as well. We say OK. We're going to add another series. This one right here, our ending stocks. We're going to say OK. Now, what are we missing? What did I forget off the last one? Well, I forgot to add our years, so I'm not going to mess up there. And I'm going to go ahead and add our years right away as well. Now I've got graphs and everything in, in my way. So I'm going to cancel, move our graph out of our way, out from over our data. And we, we should always try to do that from the beginning. I'm going to highlight my years and call it, call it good. But are we done with this graph yet? No, just like all the times before, we need to add our titles. We need to add our chart title. So we're going to say cotton use. Then we are going to, um, then we are going to go ahead and add that horizontal axis title, horizontal axis title, like all the all the times before were years. And we're going to add our vertical axis title. Our vertical axis title is still dealing with million bales. Now, what is this chart telling us? So it shows domestic use, and it compares that to exports. And that compares it to ending stocks. So first and foremost, if we add up exports, uh, ending stocks, and domestic use, it shows how much basically are we using here in the United States. So let's back up a little bit. What is ending stocks? Ending stocks are what we have left over after we get done, after our production and our beginning stocks, and we get done taking a lot of it and, and putting it into domestic use, mill use, and we export the rest of it. We're going to have some left over. We like to always have some left over going into the next production year. And this ending stocks is what do we have left over? That's the ending stock. That's the leftover stock from the previous year, the leftover supplies, basically. So you can see that the ending stocks remain fairly constant. But a large part of it, we can see how exports were kind of increasing, kind of leveled off. But we see that a large part of what our cotton use goes for is uh, exports. And we also can compare that to mill use, that a relatively small amount goes to mill use and it stays relatively the same every year. But if we look up here, we see that adding them all up is our overall cotton use between these three segments. And we see that in 2018 to 2019 to 2020, it rose and then it kind of dips off a little bit and levels off. So this was a good way to show multiple years worth of data, multiple things. And especially if you can add them up, if adding them up makes sense, like adding domestic mill use to exports and to ending stock to see exactly kind of how much are we using. If we're going to add all of them up together, that's a good way to do that. So now we've got our six graphs that we created. We have this stacked column. We have a column chart. We have our pie chart. We have a uh, line chart comparing two different separate values. We have a line chart comparing three different values that are all pertaining to basically the same thing that are all being measured off the same uh, level of measurement. And then we have just a single line chart to where now we have a comprehensive set of graphs dealing with the cotton industry to where we can really dive down. And uh, if we needed to go and give a presentation on the cotton industry, we would we could take some of these graphs and say, hey, look, our cotton yield per acre is it, it fell off on 2019, went up in 2020. We expect that it's going to go down for 2021 and then begin to increase. And, and we can look at the prices and, and begin to explain, explain the prices using visuals as compared to just using numbers.
So ultimately, um, everyone, this is basically how you create some graphs in, in Google Sheets, and it's talking about six different ways to create graphs. All of these are very important in their own aspects, um, and you will be making graphs throughout your, uh, I imagine you'll be making graphs throughout times, uh, especially if you're going to be creating presentations or things like that, or trying to really analyze data, or even on the individual farm or ranch, you may be looking at graphs such as net farm income of your own operation how has that changed over time or you might be looking at graphs of how has um something like uh production per acre changed on your farm or the mortality rate of your animals uh has how has it changed over here so graphs are a very important visual learning tool and um but that's how you create them in google sheets